my best Wookiee impression. To Comic Universe, the only nerd censored thing you need in your life. And forgive the horrendous um, Wookiee. I, I, I've done better, I swear. Uh, mostly because I'm dealing with a head cold, he's dealing with a busted leg. But we're still, damn it, we are still here for you. Even if it kills us. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Yeah, no, it's, it's not my leg getting busted up, it's yours, so. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's an old uh, high school injury that uh, while we we're at, while I was at MegaCon, took an unfortunate dive and cracked my leg up against a, a wall, and it just never was the same again. So anyway, guys, so he, he we're, Buster Keaton himself, so basically, so we're here, to guys. It's a little late, but we're going to be reviewing a, Solo, a, a Star, Star Wars story. That's right, and. Yeah, it's been a few weeks, but I guess, screw it, this is all spoiler review, so... Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. No, you... Alright, so, um, obviously the world is, is, is trash in this movie. Um, I don't think this movie deserves the trashing it's getting. Um, I'm gonna sit here and, and champion it and say it's the best, um, Star Wars movie by any stretch of the matter, no. Am um, I gonna sit here and say that this movie is the worst Star Wars movie? By any stretch of the matter, no. I understand this is not a movie that necessarily any of us wanted, any of us were even curious about. We were happy with what we knew of Solo to this point, whether the previous canon that was no longer canon or the current canon. Uh, so I don't think this movie was needed. But personally, on, on my end, I enjoyed this movie. It was a lot better than I went in thinking it was going to be. Um, Especially once Chewie and Han were together on screen, it felt like old times to me. Um, I'm mis I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head, but I think um, his mannerisms were very Hanish, if if that's a word. I'm not sure if that's a word or not, but it was very Hanish. Um, but overall, I liked it. You know that that's kind of where I stand on the whole thing. I think that this movie deserves. If you call yourself a Star Wars fan, I think we should go out and watch it because it's not as bad as people are making it out to be. And I know that we may not be happy with some of the direction that it's going. And the only way that there's going to be change is if Disney is starting to lose some money. So I understand why people aren't going to see it. Um, but I just don't, I'm afraid that there, it, we make things worse before we get them better if we don't go and support. That's just the way I feel about it. Yeah. Like um, Dub said, is that this is no, by no means the worst Star Wars movie. That title goes to Attack of the Clones. Hands down. Um, Episode 2. Worst. Yeah. yeah, this is not even like... It, it, having said that, for me, it's not the best Star Wars movie ever. I, you know, But I think it's the weakest of the Disney era of Star Wars you know, which We've only had four so far. Right. I mean, And that's where you stand. And, and on my side, I think it's the second best, personally. But uh, again, I, I definitely I'm curious see, what, what, what you think your favorite is. Uh, my, my favorite is Rogue One. My, I, okay. I think Rogue One is... Uh, I was just blown away by the ending of Rogue One. I didn't anticipate Vader being... And I, granted, I, that might just be a little portion of it. But I just found myself at the edge of my seat the entire time watching something. I already kind of knew what was going to happen at the ending. And, you know, and for there being no Jedi... You know, all the things that make Star Wars cool, minus the, the fighter jets, um, if you will, wasn't in this movie yet. It was still... In my opinion, a great movie. You know, there was no real lightsabers. There was no Jedi. I mean, sure, Vader's a Jedi, but you know what I mean? Sith. Yeah. Well, well, he was once a Jedi. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, you didn't get any of that particular part of the mythos, and it was still, I think, in captivating and enthralling as pretty much any of the others, you know? Um, for this one, for Solo, though, for me, I, I, it was just a fun time. It was... I mean, what more do you really expect out of a Han Solo and Chewbacca movie? I mean, it should just be them and shenanigans. You know, maybe just them a little more going at each other would have been all I would have asked more from this movie. I didn't expect much. You know, I don't know what everybody was expecting. I know there's a lot of people ragging on, like, you know, for me personally, I love the way he got the gun. I thought it was just yeah, very just nonchalant. And I like that. It's like it was just a simple moment. Um, 
the, the I think the best stuff, and this would have made or break the make or break the movie, was if he didn't have any chemistry with Chewbacca, and right. thankfully he did because he it's did. like that's the the ultimate bromance right there right, in exactly. Star Wars, and and that not be... not romance people bromance right, and and from the outside looking in, even before this movie came out, if someone says we're going to bring you a Star a, a Han Solo movie, what do you want out of it? I think that's what everybody would have said. The chemistry between between Chewbacca and Han have to be on point. Without that, who cares, right? And it was on point. So that's another reason why I don't think this movie is as bad as people are making it out to be. Um, it really is, it kind of saddens me to see it's almost as bad as, you know, how DC's been doing in the box office. I look at it, I'm just like, why can't it, it just be better? And I personally, if you were to ask me, I think so Solo is, is a lot better than minus Wonder Woman every D DC film we've gotten thus far. So I, I don't think it should be labeled in that same category, but it clearly the Star Wars franchise right now is in that same category. And you know, and a lot of people are throwing shade at Disney, and it's really not even Disney's fault. Yeah, it's, like, it's not Disney's fault at all. No, I mean this thing had some uh, trouble from the get go, and people were heralding it as like it's the end of Star Wars Disney. I'm like, grow up, okay? Right. That's enough. Right. Um, also, I think a lot of hate goes towards what's her name uh, that oversees Kathleen. And, Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, yeah, she kind of oversees it, and I and I, some of the pro she is part of the problem because she's really not the biggest Star Wars fan, which kind of drives me nuts. You would think that you know Disney and Lucas would want that to you know want someone who really understands the mythos, but hey. Um, I don't even think it's mo I don't even think it's her fault, really. I think um, well, some of it she fired the director. Well, that was you because Lord. Well. She didn't fire him um, directly. The apparently how it went for Lord Miller was that um, Lawrence Kasdan, uh, the writer of the film, right, and he also wrote Empire and right. and Force Awakens and a few other Star Wars films. Um, this film was different in that Lord Miller um, split because they were th this vision of theirs was like it was equivalent to the Lego movie and you can still see like little bits of their film in there of what they wanted for the film but from everyone else everyone thought it was like it was way too comedic and they wanted to have a little more heart to it so that was the thing that was the um, the case in point was that um, Lord Miller had a vastly different thought process for this film, and they wanted to make it way too comedic, like, like almost like Deadpool level. Okay, not, well, I mean, I, I'm not down for it being that comedic. Well, not like but, R rated. Yeah, but, no, yeah, I know, I know. But you know, if you were to ask me, though, I mean, at least my interpretation of Han Solo, even from the original movies, he is somewhat of a badass. But I always see him more as just someone who just happens to have this good luck bad luck thing to happen. He finds his way into this, the thickest of shit, okay, and just somehow has this X factor that he finds his way out of it type of a thing. Yeah. And it's not necessarily due to skill or awesomeness or any of that, you know, anything, you know, it's just, it's more like, I don't want to say he's not, he's not a bumbling idiot, like, by any stretch of the matter, but it is almost like that. He just kind of fumbles his way through the scenario. He sometimes. just talks his way through. Right. Well, that too. That, that If I were to give him a skill set, that's probably where it is. But he just seems to just get lucky sometimes, you know. And So I, it does open itself to some comedic, and especially between, like you said, the bromance between them. It, it should be there. But again, if it was just, if we would have labeled this movie a comedy, I would have been yeah. a little upset. So I guess and, you're right. And while Alden Elmreich, I wouldn't say his last name right, the guy who played Han. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, think he did, I think he did a really good job as Han, but I think the two best in here are Donald Glover as Lando and Woody Harrelson as the character Beckett. Which, um... I, I've heard some backlash on Beckett. I haven't heard anyone with any backlash other than, you know, the social justice warriors and... and, and the whole thing with him being pan, yeah, being a pansexual. So, but but at the same time, I'm like, it, it makes wasn't, sense to me. It makes perfect it, it sense. It makes sense because like he would like Lando wouldn't be pansexual. At least to me, he wouldn't be pansexual in the sense that he would be why you know like bi, but it would be more like hey, it'd be like you know how in um, Skyfall they kind of insinuate that mm -hmm. that James Bond probably had sex with men, right? Just to get information. That's probably how it went with Lando, where he's probably. Just you know, to get get his own way or get something out of the situation. Yeah. yeah, but even if so, I mean, he is <clears throat> he is a definitely highly stylized character, and he's a, 
got this charisma that it does make sense that he, to me, especially now, with what's his name being the you know the act the actor Donald Glover, Donald Glover being him, he has a little more of a, of a charisma than uh, Buddy D. Billy, Billy D. D. Thank you. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. How can you outclass Billy D? I think D? he just has more charisma as a character, as an actor. Is all I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, on, although it's kind of funny, like, whenever he talked in this movie, I, I always like expect him to go. And how about we have some smooth, cold, cold forty-five? Now, see, yeah, right, I can see that. But you know, he is very suave. Where I think Glover, ha he's just an all-around act. I mean, obviously, he's a rapper, he's an actor, he's a comedian. There's really he's he clearly shown he can dance. I mean, there's nothing that this guy can't do, um, in my opinion. So I just think his charisma level offers to being more open-minded. Yeah, I guess the moment that, he got cast as Lando, I was like, oh, yeah, that's I was perfect. Like, that's perfect. Yeah, right. I agree, a full-heartedly. Um, I, w I would agree with you. He's definitely uh, probably the best thing about about the whole thing. Well, Chewbacca's pretty good. Uh, he's pretty on point, too. Yeah. Um, but again, it's kind of hard to mess up Chewbacca with a bunch of, you know. And, oh. yeah. Well, it's not Peter Mayhew in the suit anymore. It's right. his stand in because Mayhew has gotten so old. Too old, yeah. Yeah. Um, but going with Beckett, he's a neat character. Um, I like um, his whole thing of, like, everyone's, you know, just believe everyone's going to backstab you, which is. A very pessimistic, but it's not all or, uh, all around wrong mm -hmm. um, for most cases. And I like his thing with Han in that he plays like a father figure, but not really. Like, right. Yeah. Um, and you clearly can see that he he learned from him too. Right? Yeah. And I really like that. And, and I'm actually thinking back now. I, I, they could have really made it really on the nose, and I'm glad they didn't. You know, yeah. the whole, like, I'm gonna be your mentor without yeah. being your mentor, you know, yeah. that was really cool. And uh, um, I did like how he his story ended with Han shooting him halfway, like, yes! yes. Like, for Th that's such a Han thing. thing. Okay, you know, let me, real quick, I, I have to let vent, I have to vent this out real quick. All the hate this movie's getting, there are, especially towards the end, there's like, I would say, three to five moments that are just so badass, Okay, obviously the, the secret character that reveals one of them. We'll get to that in a okay. moment. But they're just so like, oh my god, that's fantastic. You would assume it would have saved this movie completely. Because, in my opinion, I think, you know, episode one is, is a pretty trashy movie. But just the fact that Darth Maul's in that film kind of saves that film, you know? Just him alone makes that movie kind of cool, you know? And you would think that... All the badassery, to, especially the shooting first, the secret character. Like, those were freaking awesome. Um, and it just didn't seem to work this time around. And I think that that's what they were really probably hoping yeah. for. But, yeah. anyway. Um, also with Emily Clarkson as Kira, what did you think of her? I think I, She's better than she was in Terminator Genesis. Like, I didn't, again, I, I don't hate that movie either, but it's not a good movie. But yeah, you're right, she's way closer to and Apparently she liked what Ron Howard did with this movie more than Lord Miller, because she, even she said, I had a lot of problems with that, with how they were doing well, it. Well, he's a better director yeah. overall. I mean, he's Oscar award winning and, you yeah. know, so, I mean, he knows what he's doing. Down it's kind of funny, because, like, when he was actually set to direct uh, episode one, he was originally, yeah, like, know that. Uh, Lucas and Howard were sitting down having, like, lunch, apparently, and he was like, so, um, you want to direct episode one? And Howard was like, I don't know. Right, and it's not my wheelhouse, huh, you would think. Yeah, but, I'm, it's kind of funny that now he's finally, did, he finally right. did a Star Wars film. I think almost everybody in Hollywood, to some degree, has some sort of affinity for Star Wars, so given the opportunity, they would jump into that. And yeah. up until right now, it has been... The French, the granddaddy franchise, you know, and uh, that's also another part of me that I just kind of, I, again, I understand that the way we have to get our point across if we don't like something, is to not show up and not give them our money, but it's very sad that we're doing this to, this franchise. Like this should be the one franchise that we go. I mean, if we gave it a pass for Jar Jar, why can't we give it a pass for whatever the reason? Yeah. Why? Oh, just, you're you're pissed off about you know your your Snoke or Ray parents theory yeah, didn't work out exactly. Well, it, okay, so these movies don't apply to your, you know, your fan theories. I guarantee you, someone would have been pissed off. It was like, oh, it's really is Luke's. She really is Luke's kid. Some it, there's always going to be someone who complains. Let's right. Exactly. Let's be real here, people. Like but, these people, these films don't adhere it to your demands. Of course, yeah, no, and and I really, to a certain degree, I wouldn't want them to. You know, I have. We all have our own fan theories that go into every all of our favorite franchises. 
And sometimes they really would be the better choice to go, and sometimes they wouldn't. And until we, we see the absolute end game, we it's hard to judge everything in between. Yeah. So I think we should just learn to live with it and move on. Yeah. Again, if we gave forgave Jar Jar Binks, why can't we just... Well, we didn't really it? forgive, we well, just forgot. There's a difference. I never forgot <laughs> and you never forgave no one forgave Jar Jar I mean, we just even George Lucas forgot we showed up, we showed up for, for episode 2 and we showed up and that was bad that was trash and we still showed up for episode 3 so I just don't understand. and no matter how many how much, how much you bitched you, you still showed up for episode 7 right and episode 8 and, and I guess there is something said to be between the time frames of those movies um, and that could be you know some people are saying it, it's it's Star Wars fatigue, but then you get the people counterbalancing. Well, look at Marvel; they drop three movies a year, and they could probably drop six but, movies a year, and there would be no fatigue there. And I'm like, they are. You, you've got a point, but they are different types of movies. They're not the same. It's not a space but, opera. But yeah. So do you want to talk about the secret character? Go ahead. So throughout the movie, we were building up to this boss, um, the secret boss of this gang called the Crimson Band. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it's revealed it's, it's Darth Maul. Now, as a Star Wars fan, I know that this is all part of his canon. I'm fully aware of that, and this is like six years into the Empire's reign. And in Rebels, that he's already dead. Obi-Wan and him had their fight Tatooine. Obi-Wan defeated him, killed him for good this time. But there is a point also in Rebels, see, the end of Season 2, where he is trapped on a planet called Malachor, that where he's searching for a Sith weapon after being chased by Vader and the Inquisitors there. Now my thing is, I just want to know how did he get from top of the food of the it, the underworld food chain all the way to half crazed alone on a godforsaken planet? That's where I want to know, and I'm, you wouldn't put that in a movie unless you had an idea for it, right? And, and like you said in our conversation off off screen. Uh, we got like what twenty years you said to yeah, play it's a, with. Well, not really twenty years. It's more like a fifteen year. Okay, so for, for him to get to Malachor, and then he's on his own up until Obi Wan kills him. Right. So we're looking at at least ten to fifteen years uh, of of playroom, and and I think kind of that this might be like I mentioned to you. I think this might be the focal point moving forward with um, the side stories. The so I, I, when I say the solo stories, I don't necessarily mean on solo, just the spinoffs, if you will. Um, like uh, the Boba Fett movie. Boba Fett. I think they're all going to somehow tie back into Maul and all this, the shenanigans he's kind of causing. But at the same universe. time, these are supposed to be anthology films. I don't want them to be like tied to get, like, you know, I kind of want them just to be fun one and dones, you know? I don't know if I need continuity in my... Uh, yeah, well, I, I think that there's a something that might save the franchise if they do it that way. And I also agree with you on the flip side that they don't necessarily need to be all because connected. people like if you weren't a Star Wars fan and you watched that that scene, my dad saw it with me and he went, "That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen." Because like he didn't, I had to explain to him. And the other thing is, if they do this and Maul still lives, people are going to be like, if you, "Then I'll have to tell people go watch Rebels. They've already covered how that story ends." Right. So. But who knows, we may end up getting that scene in live action, you know? That would be kind of cool, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, what would be cool is if um, maybe we could have, like, how he got to Malachor's, like, Vader and him faced off. Vader whipped his ass and he ran off, you know? Right, and then eventually he meets... I think, I honestly, I have this feeling, <clears throat> this real gut-wrenching feeling, that it may not go that route, now, considering how bad the movie did, but I think that was their plan, that all these movies have some sort of loose connection, and I think it would be Maul, and I think it was overall going to be the story of that character, I think, was the arc. Either that, they'll cover it in a book or something, because like, they said that him and Kira are going to be working together and on his home planet, right. you know, Dathomir, which um, it, was but, not, it was neat to see that, and also there were some neat little references throughout, but I know a lot of people got excited for the references in this movie, but at the same time... Just because a movie makes a reference to something doesn't mean it's going to be automatically good. Like, um, there's references to Aura Singh, who's a bounty hunter, and apparently she's dead. To yeah. Beckett killed her. Um, there's so many little references, but at the same time, it's like, Deadpool wasn't good just because it made references and jokes. Deadpool was good because there was actually, like, like good writing. Right, good. right, right. 
Um, but on the flip side, also think about how cool it would be to see Vader and Maul go at it. Exactly. Like, so that's what I'm telling you. I think they, they, they're kind of banking on... I just have this really gut-wrenching feeling that Maul is going to be the focal point for a while. And they're going to work in somehow to get the two of them. Because uh, how could that not? Like... Well, they fought before. Like I know. They, and I, yeah, but we're, we're, that was previous canon. But the, but on the flip side, we're talking. You're talking. You, me, the average Star Wars, or the not the average Star Wars fan. We're talking about the diehard fans that would know all of that. Like your dad. Your dad watches. He likes Star Wars, right? He, he didn't watch Rebels though. Oh, he did. No, he didn't. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, who, I, I I'm actually a fan, and I had never watched. I knew what happened. I just have never yeah. seen the show. It just. I never got around to getting to it. But at the same yet, time, so. it's like, um, if you do that and Maul still gets away, people are going to be pissed off. Like, why did Maul get away? He's still out there. And then you'd have... Uh, then the, But the uh, that's the the uh, general fan. The other fans who do watch Rebels will be like, well, yeah, that his story ended on Tatooine, you know, fighting Obi-Wan. But that's what I'm saying, because we're supposed to begin an Obi-Wan movie. I think that's how maybe all of this ends. The Obi-Wan movie ends with us seeing them fight. Well, that already happened in Rebels. That's I, canon. So they, I understand, and but they, I think we're going to get in live action. Is what I'm saying. I think they're going to make money because they're not going to. They're not making money hand over fist with with Rebels. That'd be redundant, though, uh, don't you think? I don't. To the average audience, I don't think so. To you, it would be. Well, I mean, like it just ha and then you because the whole thing is it ties in with the main character Ezra's story. So at the same time, you're watching this and be like, if that if that's the case, then what the fuck was the point of Ezra at all? You know, because, but, I mean, for the same point, why we get live action versions of other movies? Like, again, but yeah, you, it's you, all, you didn't like Beauty and the Beast, but look how much money Beauty and the Beast made. Well, that's not a part of a giant universe that everything is done is in canon. It, Beauty and the Beast is just its own thing. And that's the thing is like, are you going to just now and just do a remake of the final act of Obi Wan with as that episode I, of Rebels? That's how I think it's going to go. Well, he, then you have to explain. Well, who the hell's Ezra? I think you know? he'll be introduced into the show. I think he'll be introduced into the movies. I think. I think the concept of Rebels will make its way into the movies. It already did in Rogue One. I think more so. I think it's going to be a focal point. I think I really have this feeling about that. I just there's just too much iconic badassery that comes from that, and the fact of seeing Maul and Vader on screen together because they can't put the two of them on screen together and then it not tie back into the canon that we've already known happened because then it would throw off that canon and it would piss off everybody. So you see what I'm saying? Like, they can't just make up a story where they faced each other. You know, come on. I mean, how much money... In hindsight, I know we go, Star Wars movie can't fail, and we're looking at Solo, and it's kind of tanking. But really, if they showed a clip right now, the next Star Wars movie is going to have Vader and, and, and Maul square off. Even for even if it's a, a two-second thing, you don't think people are going to be throwing money to go see that? That's all I'm saying. I'm just looking at it at this as standpoint yeah. it just makes more sense for that well i think we, we've completely gone off the rails but well i mean it's still star wars <laughs> yeah but still like if you're still here um i guess final rating of the movie um i'd give it a three out of five i'm gonna give it a three out of five it's not again it's the weakest in my opinion for the new era of star wars but having said that i think it, it's a good time it's a good time i feel like it, i'm glad i saw this as a matinee i feel like I, i'd be a little ripped off if i saw it um like like as a premiere night I saw it, I saw it opening night and I was fine with it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, this is not the worst Star Wars movie people. Pump the brakes. Right, exactly. So. All right guys, so the universe let us know what you guys thought. Let us know if you love it, you hate it, if you're indifferent, if you're going to continue to support Star Wars and or if you're done. Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like. I, I just can't help but uh, like imagine people going, I'm doing this stuff. They're like throwing stuff and they're like, they're running away to join the circus. Like, oh, why'd you do this to me, Kathleen Kennedy? Oh, I won't leave you behind, Darth Vader helmet. I got signed my day Frost. I'm gonna run away. I just kind of imagine when people say they leave the fandom, that's how I imagine them. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's tons of people out there that are like that. Anyway. Anyway, guys. So until next time. Uh, see you once more in the universe.